In this Behind the Artist, I'll talk about Shutter Gun, Peter Gunn's website. Let me start by reading to you what Peter says about himself on his About section of his site. Peter says, I am a photographer living in the greater Toronto area of Canada. I create new and original images. In my work, I see rules as impediments that I can address with subject, composition, and process. Let's check out a few of his photos. This first one has a certain Rothko type effect on me, like I could sit and meditate on it. Maybe because my brain made the connection between the visual similarities, I don't know. But aside from the meditation aspect, I simply find it pleasant to look at. The differing types and colors of light trails against the background of creamy neutrals. I see how many of the light trails are grouped together, but there are others, outliers if you will, that stray outside the mainstream. In the last work, I could tell that it was a photograph from the light trails, but in this one, the fact that it is a photograph is far less obvious, which is interesting to me. Regardless, the colors are beautiful. It looks sort of foggy or misty, and I want to just see through all of that into the beyond. This one is a bit less abstract than the first two. It's a part of a different project. I like the contrast of the bright orangey red and the blue sky with all of the foggy motion in between. It's like, I think I can tell what's going on here, but I don't know if I care because I simply like the photo. It's a little mysterious. This image is obviously not just a photo. There is some digital media going on as well. This is definitely a juxtaposition, isn't it? The, the very organic looking background and the hard non-organic shapes in the foreground. I see how there is symmetry in the T-shape, how the second to last circles from the ends of the horizontal line are lighter than the rest. I can't help but wonder about that. And now this one is a bit of a departure from what I've shown you so far. You can actually see the photo of the flower and bee, but then there is digital media overlaid. Now, I have to admit, I cheated a little bit. After I looked at the photos on Peter's site, I took a look at some materials he had sent to me about this particular project. I had the intention of only looking at the photos, but before I could really help myself, I read a bit about what his purpose was with the project, and I want to share it with you, so let's go back to the image. In this project, Peter is challenging the viewer, as artists often do. He takes symbols that we see every day, such as the question mark or the arrow, and he's putting it somewhere convention would say that it doesn't belong. In this case, nature. If I understand correctly, it's a commentary on the arbitrary nature, you could say, of symbols. Like, why is a question mark shaped like a question mark? And why does it go at the end of some sentences? The point of my Behind the Artist series is simply to appreciate the art. I don't need to know what camera they used, what the settings were. I just want to see other people's work and draw my own conclusions. That being said, I find myself wanting to delve deeper into Peter Gunn's work. I don't really care so much about the exact equipment that he used or settings, but I do wonder what his process looks like and where he gathers his inspiration. For example, in this one, I can't help but wonder how he achieved those hooks of light. Maybe that's the art historian in me, always wanting to see behind the surface and give the art a frame of reference. I do also want to note to you guys that Peter's website is superb. <laughs> I love the simplicity of it and how he has positioned himself, explaining his purpose succinctly and grouping his images by project. There's nothing to distract you from the art and it leaves you wanting to know more. So seriously, go there. Thanks, Peter, for sharing your work with us. It was a pleasure.